I started a print-on-demand digital download store and received my first order within two weeks. So in today's video, I'll be showing you everything from my store and sharing my process including product research, the prompts I used, how I enhanced my art and the mockups and keywords I used for my listings. By sharing my experience, I believe it will provide you with insightful tips and tricks that you can apply to your own store. So be sure to watch until the end because I assure you that every detail shared in this video will be important. Also, I didn't do anything for this store that led to my suspension, so don't worry about that. Let's take a look at my store before we begin. I have chosen the vintage art niche, specifically targeting people searching for moody, eerie, dark type art prints. I will explain why this niche later on. So I started publishing listings from the 17th of May and stayed consistent in uploading at least 3 designs per day. 40 listings and 10 days later, I received my first print order. I had a sale with only 17 views resulting in a 5% conversion rate which I think is pretty good. The digital download listing for the same art had 4 times more views and favourites but 0 sales. From that one sale, I've made a total profit of $20 which is roughly a 40% profit margin. Now, pricing your items is something you'll have to experiment with based on market value and how much you're willing to sacrifice your profits. Moving on to why I chose the vintage niche which brings me to product research. This is how I usually do it. Typically, I'll start my search with broad terms like printable art, wall art, print or unframed art. My goal here is to find what's working and try to create similar products based on that. I look for best sellers or products that have indications of high demand such as over 20 people have this in their basket or products with recent reviews. I'll take note of the keywords and favourite the stores that inspire me. Remember, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here, we're just leveraging on Etsy's algorithm. Basically, when you click on a product, Etsy will recommend you similar products from various shops. That's why it's important to create similar products to the best sellers because then your product has a higher chance of being recommended to customers who are viewing the best seller product. This is especially helpful for new stores and if you need that initial boost in traffic to your listings. I hope that makes sense. With that, I managed to find a shop selling what appears to be AI art poster prints. I went on Alora to analyze it and discovered that they have generated almost 20,000 in revenue within 5 months, which is quite impressive if you ask me. I also found similar stores selling digital downloads which are doing well but not as well as Phantasmal prints. This validates that there's a high demand for vintage prints. Upon further inspection of Phantasmal prints, I noticed that they are only selling in 3 sizes. This gives me an opportunity to attract customers who are looking for more size options. That's why I started a whole new shop dedicated to selling vintage prints offering multiple sizes. So to get started with my store, I used Alora again to see the top best selling products from Phantasmal prints and used Midjourney to recreate them. So let's head over to Midjourney now so I can show you all that. To get me started, I took a snippet of the arcade ghost art and asked Midjourney to describe it. The results I got from it were kinda bad to be honest, but as I mentioned, it was just to get me started. I made tweaks and tried variations and eventually I came up with this which I like the most. I mean just look at it, isn't it beautiful? I tried a few more options but I didn't have any luck with them. By the way, here are some tips if you're stuck with your prompting. Look at the community showcase for inspiration and see what you can find. Alternatively, use this block to search for different artist styles or anything you need. This block has it all. That's how I managed to come up with simple prompts like this that create fun art like the one you see here. Also, experiment with the chaos parameter because some of the creative artworks I've generated came from trying out different chaos values. Here's more of my prompts that I've used to create for my listings. And if you want the full list to my prompts, please leave a comment saying ghost. So with this art, the next step is to upscale it. If you want to sell your artwork, upscaling on mid-journey alone wouldn't be enough. So I highly recommend further upscaling it. 
Personally, I have used Upskill and I would recommend it if you're looking for a free Upskiller. I can assure you that the quality will be good based on the multiple 5 stars reviews I've received. Once the image is upscaled, the next step is to resize it. I won't go into detail about that because I have a video dedicated to it, so feel free to watch it after this. But before resizing, I'll touch up the art from this to this, which in my opinion greatly improves the lighting and texture. I used Photoshop for this process, but if you don't have it, you can use Photo P, which is a free alternative. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure if what I did was correct, but it worked. So yeah, here's what I did. I'll duplicate the layer first, then use the magic wand tool to select the subject. Next, I create a layer mask and add a curve adjustment layer. I don't fully understand all the values here, so I simply play around and make adjustments until I'm satisfied with the outcome. In most cases, I just want to darken the background to create that moody vibe and that's pretty much it. It's a simple process yet it helps so much. Once all the files are prepared, let's create mockups. I only use three mockups for all my products. Now, I understand that mockups are important but I was surprised when I saw Phantasmal Prince mockups because they are so simple and easy to create. Clearly it worked for them so I thought why not I try the same too and yeah it surprisingly worked. I have my mockups in psd files which are easy for me to edit i simply open them with photoshop double click the smart object and replace it with the art i want to showcase and for my digital download listings i'll include a tag so that customers know it's a digital download it's simple as that i believe these mockups are free and can be found online if you want these mockups i've shared them in a link where you can find it in the description below now that we have our files and mockup ready let's create our listing. To upload a print on demand item, you first need to have an account with any of the print on demand platforms. I've chosen Printful since it's one of the best based on the reviews I've read online. Before I show you the steps, let me quickly explain how the process works when someone places a print on demand item so you can understand everything better. Whenever someone orders an item from your Etsy store, Printful will automatically create an order and fulfill fill it for you. Printful will deduct the payment from your wallet directly rather than from Etsy. The money you receive from Etsy will go into your payment account which you will only receive periodically. So yeah, that's how it works. Now, let's go through the steps. First, you need to connect your store if you haven't already. Next, you have to decide the type of wall art you want to offer. I've chosen photo paper because that's what Phantasmal Print was offering and it worked for them. Then, click on create product template. This is where it may get a bit confusing so just bear with me. Once you are here, click on upload and create a folder for each design you are going to upload. For example, I'm going to create a folder for ghost art and then upload expect ratio 2x3, 4x5 and 3x4 files. It's best to name your files like this so that you can easily differentiate them. Okay, so here's what we are going to do. First, we'll create the product variant for expect ratio 4x5 and then we'll change the print file to create the product variant for expect ratio 2x3 and 3x4. Let me walk you through the steps. Here, I'm going to apply the expect ratio 4x5, select 8x10 and 16x20 sizes. You can refer to a wall size chart if needed. Save the product template and click add product to store. Proceed to mockups, click on basic mockups and continue. Leave it as it is for now as we'll edit it later on. I'm not going to advise you on pricing since I'm not an expert but standard profit margins are usually around 15 to 20 percent. Click on set revenue to change it your desired value then submit it to store. Next, click on stores and view stores. I can't exactly simulate the steps here since I can't add a listing but you see something like this where it shows two items sync and draft as the status on Etsy. Now we are going to add more product variants by clicking on edit. Remove the current layer, go to your uploads and select 
the next expect ratio. Click on products, deselect the current sizes and select the new sizes for the current ratio file. I can't show you the next steps but it's similar for the mockups and pricing. Once you have added that, give it a while to load and it will show 4 items sync. Repeat the steps for the last expect ratio and if done correctly, it will show 6 items sync like what I have here. I hope that's clear and if you have any questions, please feel free to comment and I'll answer them. Once everything is fully synced, go to your Etsy store's draft and you should be able to see a new listing created automatically by Printful. It may take some time to load, so refresh the page if you don't see it. When it appears, simply edit the listing and change the views accordingly. Honestly, just look at what's working for other sellers and make slight changes for your own. But here are some high search volume keywords that I have found using eRank, which I ensure to include in my listings. As for the product description, provide a brief overview of the product including the material being offered, processing time and shipping time. Keep the description simple and clean. For the keyword tags, remember to use highly searched keywords. Market research tools can be helpful in identifying keywords with high search volume and competition levels. When it comes to variations, you may notice that they are initially jumbled up and I can't stand them. So to arrange them nicely, click on Edit Variation. Here, you can move the sizes accordingly. And for delivery, Printful will automatically create the profile for you. So just go with the option they select. That pretty much covers the process for print-on-demand items. Now for digital downloads, I recommend using Google Drive for ease of use. Create a folder and upload your files. Click on the folder and click Share. Change the access to anyone with the link and set the option to viewer. Now this shareable link will be the one you will be providing to your customers. You can paste it on a notepad or a PDF file. I'll simply go on Canva and select any of the A4 document template and format it as desired. In the PDF file, include a simple thank you message and a button containing the link to the Google Drive folder. This PDF file will be uploaded to your listing as the digital download. So whenever a customer purchases your product, they will receive this PDF file and upon opening it, they can assess the files by clicking on the button which will bring them to the Google Drive folder. And there you have it. If you have watched this far into the video, I would like to thank you so much for your attention. I hope this video has been helpful and I wish you all the best in your journey. As always, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.